Hello, this is Sir Chet. Welcome to another episode of The Contemporary World. Today, we will have part two of our lesson on cultural globalization. Last time, we talked about Eastern culture. Today, we will talk about Western culture. We have seen last time how Eastern culture looks like in general. So today, our objective is to take a look at its counterpart in the West. And so Western culture, as we can, we will see today, is so different from the East. Like um, in North America, in Europe, that's where you have, uh, that's what we call the Western lands, okay? And uh, you may also include Australia and New Zealand as part of the West. Um, the clothes are so different. In the East, you won't see uh, these kinds of people wearing uh, such clothes because uh, this is the formal wear in the West. So when they attend meetings and special functions, you will see uh, Westerners uh, wear the tuxedo. Okay? Or in the Philippines, we call it the Americana. But uh, for the Easterners, they have a different set of clothes for their uh, formal meetings, like the Arabs and uh, the uh, Koreans for their wedding. They have a different set of clothes. Also, for the women in the West, uh, they, they uh, wear clothes that show much skin compared to the women in the East, wherein uh, they're pretty much covered. Now, also uh, in music, as you can see, the Westerners have a different set of musical instruments. Classical, where it, be it classical or uh, modern. And even the notations that uh, you have the G clef and the F clef, you don't have such in Eastern music. So, as you can see, the East and the West are really contrasting. Now, in terms of... Uh, practices or mentality, they are also different worlds apart. In the West, uh, Westerners believe in individualism, the importance of uh, reaching your goal, being the best version of yourself, succeeding in life as an individual. Whereas in the East, it's more of collectivism. You try to meet your goal, you try to uh, accomplish much as a team or as a group. You want to succeed, you succeed together. But in the East or, or in the West, it's more of you succeed as an individual. And also, um, the family orientation is different. In the East, as I've mentioned in the past lesson, they practice close family ties. But in the West, as uh, you can see in the Simpson uh, cartoon, when people grow old, they put them in institutions or homes for the aged. They don't stay in their children's homes. But in the East, when people grow old, their children and grandchildren keep them in their homes and take care of them until they die. Not so in Western society. And of course, in the West, they have liberal views on sex and gender. Uh, there is a meme in the West. I don't know how uh, true this is. Uh, they say that... Um, in the West, if you are 18 years old and you are uh, still a virgin, there's something wrong with you. Either you are too ugly, nobody wants to do it with you, or you're a geek or a nerd. So it's uh, pretty much normal in, in Western societies that if you're 18, 
you are already sexually active. But in the Eastern uh, societies, it's the other way around. If you are 18 and you are uh, no longer a virgin and you are here in the Philippines or in the East, how the society looks at you. Quite very different from how the West looks at uh, people. And also uh, the issue on uh, gender. Uh, we all know that uh, same-sex marriage and um, the LGBT movement, they had their origins in the West. And uh, today, they, they are pretty much uh, accepted in the West. But in the East, not too many uh, people in the East or not too many societies in uh, Asia accept uh, same-sex marriage and homosexuality. I don't think um, you would see a, a Muslim or a Hindu uh, or a Buddhist right uh, pr uh, allowing same-sex marriage. But in the West, it is very much accepted. Also in the West, they have uh, the concept of materialism. Success is equated by uh, how much you have or how much you own or success is seen as having a big fat bank account a big house with a swimming pool in the backyard a big car for every member of the family a big refrigerator with lots of food and uh, a big sofa everything is big that is how the West views a good life but for the East, it's not uh, that much, okay? It's, it's, the East are quite minimalists or uh, they, they believe in simplicity of life. Like for the Japanese, uh, they don't even have too many furnitures in their house and they eat on the floor and uh, they, have, they love small cars and uh, it's so different from the West, all right? On a lighter note, let's look at cuisine in the West. So these are examples of food that originated from the West, like French fries and hamburgers, uh, spaghetti, and uh, pizza, and uh, lots of uh, fancy kinds of pies and cakes. Wow, these pictures are making me hungry. While... Um, in the East, you know how different the food are, okay? So another thing about the West is their greeting. So for Westerners, the favorite greeting would be the handshake because they are a contact people. They love uh, shaking hands. And when they shake hands, they, they even... Uh, um, squeeze your hand and and sh shake it hard so hard that they almost yank your uh, shoulder out of your body <laughs> and say how are you so that's how Westerners welcome their friends but in the East as we've mentioned they are a non-contact people they are content with a bow all right also the holidays that you see in the West are so different from the East. Holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas are not celebrated in the East. Okay, so we can see the contrast here of East and West. Now another part of the Western world is Latin America. And uh, this is uh, specifically South America and Central America. They are in the western side of the world, or west of the Jerusalem line, but uh, their culture is uh, quite different from the United States and Europe's culture. Not very different though, but uh, slightly different from the other westerners, but they are so different from the east. So here is a picture of 
culture in Latin America. And as you can see, they are heavily influenced by Catholicism. So the countries in Latin America are Catholics. And they also have the same uh, rituals and holidays as the Filipinos. They also have the fiesta. And they also mob the Pope like a rock star. And uh, they also have a communion and baptism the same uh, way Filipinos practice the Catholic religion. And this is different from North America and Europe which are predominantly Protestant. But now in the recent times, uh, there is a growing a number of um, agnosticism and atheism in Europe and North America. Uh, more and more Westerners are no longer practicing any form of religion. But as for the Latin Americans, up to now they are still fervent Catholics. In fact, the current Pope is from Argentina, which is in South America. Um, the cuisine in Latin America, we know, Mexican food, spicy, uh, like uh, the tortilla, okay? And uh, their dances are uh, unique also, like the flamenco and the Brazilian dances, like uh, samba, okay? And um, most of the dances and music from Latin America is uh, influenced by Spain, because Spain had its big empire in Latin America long time ago. And for the greeting, the Latin Americans are quite different from the other Westerners because they don't do the handshake, they do the beso beso, okay? especially for the ladies. That's how you do the beso beso. Actually, beso is a Spanish word which means kiss. Okay? So beso beso means kiss, kiss. Okay. Now, what is this thing called cultural invasion? At this point in our discussion, we have now seen the contrast of East and West. How different is Eastern culture from Western culture? Now, the concept of cultural invasion says that one of these cultures is invading, is invading the other. Okay? And what is the invading culture? Okay, and what culture is being invaded? And in uh, such an invasion, globalization is happening. The breaking down of barriers happen when one culture invades the other culture. Okay, how does that commence? Let us go back to the age of colonialism. Okay, the time when the Western uh, Europeans travel the seas, the oceans, to discover new lands and conquer them. That's a time when West conquered East, when the Spaniards, the Portuguese, the Dutch, they conquered places in Asia. And when they do so, they imp they uh, are actually uh, imposing their political power on the Easterners. In what way? When they say that our king will be your new king. The king of Spain will be your king. Or you will serve now the king of Spain. And you will be our subjects. So that is an imposition of political power. Not only political power did they impose on us Easterners, but also economic exploitation happened. They took our natural resources. They used our lands for their business, their agricultural business. Remember the world order we mentioned in the previous lesson? The farm factory relationship? the center-periphery setup of the world, 
they are the center the west is the center and the east would be the periphery and we are suppliers of raw materials for the factories that they had during the industrial revolution in europe so there is an economic exploitation as well and when these colonies operate you know it's not only politics and economics that are involved but also culture there is an infiltration of western culture on the east their culture infiltrated us in what way they think that western culture is more superior than eastern culture that's what we were taught when the spaniards came here they imposed their religion and culture on the native filipinos they they uh, made the filipinos give up their old traditional religion and uh, ask everyone to convert to catholicism just like what you can see in the painting and uh, they also made the filipinos accept the spanish way of life like the simple wearing of clothes uh the shirt okay and uh, the hat the european hat and pants and so we filipinos bid goodbye to the bahag because the spaniards uh, ask us to do so and then we also got their names their family names you see the spaniards imposed not only politics and economics but also culture on us and th this also happened in other colonies of the europeans here in the east another uh, example of how westerners invaded our culture is through uh, movies okay? uh, here is an example of a, an, an old movie the title is the king and i i don't know if you know this movie it's a very very old movie and uh, the story is about the king of thailand okay and uh, he hired a british lady in his service to be the tutor of her children and so uh, one day they had a big argument because the king found out that the British lady is not teaching his children how to bow. And we all know that in Eastern culture, the bow is very, very important. And so the British lady, being uh, so different in culture, explained to the Eastern king why she doesn't believe in the worthiness of the bow she said that in their place okay, in the west everybody is equal and she says that the symbolism of the bow is you are acknowledging that the other person is higher than you and you are lower and and so in the west that is a no-no and that's what she's teaching the children and for the king that is not a very nice lesson and so they had a big argument so that is just an example of how different the east and the west are in terms of culture okay and mentality and how uh, the west in a subtle way is trying to uh, change the east to be like them okay or in a, a subtle way of saying that western culture is superior than eastern culture now in the modern times if we look at the movies that we have hollywood movies we can see the same theme and um it's i don't know if you are observant Huh? 
that uh, most of the movies that Hollywood produces and is watched in the East, okay, or not only in the East, but worldwide, talk, talk about uh, Western culture being superior than Eastern culture. Isn't it that Hollywood's movies' plots show America as being the savior of the world? Have you noticed that uh, many Hollywood movies are about some kind of end of world uh, problem or crisis like an alien invasion or uh, some kind of monsters invading the earth or a big catastrophe and a meteor uh, crashing to earth and uh, maybe uh, a, a, a big big uh, troublemaker and all the world is in peril okay and america would be the solution to that an american character would be the bida in the story and they would have a big room okay i don't know if you notice this a big control room wherein all these american um officials would have video uh, screens all over in the big room monitoring the world and how they are uh, going through the crisis and uh, in that uh, computer in that uh, control room they would be uh, seeing the progression of the problem and some people in the battlefield or some people right there in the midst of the uh, crisis uh, the characters would die one by one the first ones to die would be the Asians and then the blacks and then the, the fat and the ugly and the nerd and the old, the aged uh, characters. And the survivor would be the pretty white lady and the handsome white man. That would always be the ending of such uh, movies so it's it may be a subtle way could it be a subtle way of saying that um, the west is superior than the east and the solution of the problems of the world lies in the hands of the westerners think about that and um, tell me huh, what are your views regarding that all right so another um, sign or another practice that we can see that westerners are quite invading our culture and our mentality that saying that their culture is superior is in the field of medicine the western medicine over here is thought to be superior than eastern medicine now, Western medicine is all about uh, the use of uh, tablets okay, and capsules that you drink to make your body better. But for the Easterners, their medicine comprises of herbs okay, and sometimes um, acupressure and acupuncture, like pressing parts of your foot to address a certain disorder in a body part not in your foot but uh, connected to the nerves of your foot and uh, they press that part of the foot or sometimes they puncture using pins and then they will feel well I remember I once had a Korean student who told me he will be absent for a day because he will go to Makati to meet a Korean doctor who will perform acupuncture on him for his liver ailment. And uh, I asked him, uh, there are many good doctors here in Laguna. And he said uh, he doesn't uh, trust Western medicine, but he, he would rather go to uh, traditional Korean or Eastern uh, medicine practitioners but in our time uh, who who are people like him very few a lot more people believe in Western medicine these days 
This is what is being taught in medical schools in the Philippines. They don't teach this. They teach this. And you can ask any doctor friend or um, student, medical student that you know. Western medicine is being taught to be superior over Eastern medicine because Eastern medicine is thought to be mythical, okay? just a myth. Well, think about that. Another example, lastly, is the colonial mentality among Filipinos. We Filipinos would normally think that what is Western is good stateside as they call it and what is local is not good it's uh when when you hear the word local it means it's it's poor quality um like when you go uh, shopping uh, you you would uh, look for a shoe of course you will choose the brands like nike and you will not choose bantex and uh, when you watch a movie together with your girlfriend uh, would you choose uh, a James Bond movie or a Judai movie? See? Of course, naturally, you won't like uh, the local movie. Uh, would you choose Spider-Man over Gagamboy or the other way around? And even in our choice of names or first names that we will give our children and future children, would you call your uh, children, would you name your children uh, Tekla or Pankrasha or Kurdapia? No, of course. Huh. You would give such names like Kimberly and Stephanie and uh, John, Matthew. Those are the nice names. But Eastern names or local names are funny. So that's colonial mentality at its finest in Filipino culture. So as we can see today in our lesson that Western culture has invaded the East and unknowingly or unconsciously we are already victims or we are already or we have accepted or embraced Western culture. So, what is happening now in the globalization of culture? The world is developing just one culture because the other has invaded the other. And so, it's just going to be one culture. And what is that one world culture that is developing? Western culture. And the Eastern culture is slowly fading away because of Western cultural invasion but wait most recently the Easterners are uh, having uh, some kind of popularity and uh, they are they are making some small dents or small jabs on Western culture okay like for example uh, the the Eastern the aspects of Eastern culture that is gaining popularity in the West, okay, uh, is martial arts movies. Okay, we can see uh, Jackie Chan being popular in the U.S., Bruce Lee, and uh, such movies like Karate Kid, okay, so wherein uh, they are uh, uh, showing that some kind of Eastern uh, cultural aspect is accepted or is cool in the West. Also, the Chinese New Year celebration in America is becoming popular. Like, look at Stephen Curry and uh, the other guy here. They have Chinese characters on their jerseys. And they wear these uniforms during the Chinese New Year celebration. So, right now in the U.S., um, the Chinese community is being acknowledged. And they are even being honored in NBA games. And the yoga fad is quite popular in America. Many uh, Americans and Europeans practice yoga for fitness, but they don't know the origin of yoga is the East. And in the Philippines, there is a K-pop invention, 
or uh, invasion rather the k-pop uh, korean pop music uh, actors fashion are being uh, copied by many young filipinos so it's not only america that we look up to as cool but also koreans and of course the herbal medicine fad many uh, people in the west are now considering herbal supplements and uh, herbal medicines over the traditional western medicine and uh, especially like uh, in the treatment of cancer uh, they, they, the cancer uh, patients would uh, prefer organic uh, food and medicine okay so we have seen that uh, in little ways the east is also invading the west but these are just small jabs or little kinds of uh, impact but the bigger one that has uh, really made an impact on the other is western culture we have seen that the west has so big an influence right now all over the world and that's what we call cultural invasion a one world culture evolving and how would that look like eastern or western what do you think what do you think is the eastern or what do you think is the new look new world culture our lesson on cultural globalization has come to an end we have seen east and west and how west conquered the east culturally and a lot of questions have been posed today in your minds okay so think about those questions and i will see you in our next episode we will have a new lesson all right this is Sergeant saying goodbye, thank you, and God bless us all.